Logic Pro for iPad is supported on a surprisingly wide range of iPad models. Every model from the M2 iPad Pro to the iPad 8th generation will run the app, but they won't all run it the same. Older iPad models in particular can stutter, freeze, or lock up completely when you load up multiple plugins, instruments, or tons of tracks in a Logic Pro for iPad project. If you're having issues running Logic on your iPad model, there are a few things you can do to have a smoother experience. I have an iPad 8th generation here, and I'm trying to load up this project. It has loads of heavy duty plugins and software instruments in it, and it just won't play back smoothly or at all, really. There are a few things that I can do to get things moving. First off, I can tap on the three dots button in the top right of Logic screen, and then select settings. From here, if I select the audio tab, I can access the I.O. buffer menu. Essentially, the lower the I.O. buffer size, the lower the latency or delay when monitoring your performance while recording audio or software instrument tracks. Setting the I.O. buffer to the smallest amount, 64 samples in this case, minimizes the monitoring delay, but also places a higher strain on your iPad's processor. The more processor-intensive plugins you use in a project, the higher the demand on your iPad's processor during playback, which begins to affect playback in the form of clicks, pops, and crackles in your audio, or complete lockups. Setting the I.O. buffer to a higher value allows you to use more plugins during mixing without overpowering the CPU. So in a nutshell, when you're recording audio or a software instrument, you want to set this as low as possible. When you're done recording and come to mix your project, you can set this to a higher amount. You can check how much pressure your iPad CPU is under by enabling the CPU slash memory display by again tapping these three dots and selecting Customize Control Bar. In the Display tab, toggle on CPU slash memory, and you'll be able to monitor CPU and memory usage in real time. Also in the Customize Control Bar menu, head to the Modes tab and toggle on Low Latency Monitoring. When activated, this will automatically turn off plugins in your project that cause high latency. This is useful if you want to add new recordings or tracks to an already in-progress project, but don't want to dive in and out of the audio menu to adjust buffer sizes every time you add a new recording or track. Another way you can drastically improve the playback performance of a project, especially one that has loads of software instruments in it, is by freezing tracks. By freezing a track, you're reducing its processor usage to that of a high-resolution audio track without effect plugins, regardless of the number or complexity of the plugins actually used on the track. When you freeze a track, the track is bounced to an audio freeze file, which includes the output of any plugins on the track and any track automation. While the track is frozen, the freeze file plays back in place of the original track, which is temporarily deactivated, including its plugins. To freeze tracks, you'll first need to add the freeze option to your track headers. Tap the three buttons found above all track headers, then select Customize Track Header. In the next menu, toggle on Freeze. You'll see the Track Freeze button has appeared in your track headers. There are two different freeze modes that you can use. Select the track you want to freeze, then open the Inspector window. Change the Inspector window to Track, and in the More section, tap on Freeze mode to select between Source Only or Pre-Fader 
freeze modes. Source only freezes the track signal without any effect plugins. When selected, the freeze button appears green. And Prefader freezes the track signal, including all effect plugins. When selected, the freeze button appears blue. This is also the default. And for best results, you'll probably want to select the pre fader option. Tap the freeze button for as many tracks as you need, then hit play, and those tracks will be frozen. Once the process is complete, you should find your project plays back far smoother. That's how to make Logic Pro run smoother on older iPads. If you found this video helpful, then give that like button a good hard tap. It really, really does help the channel out. And if you're not subscribed already, well, now is the time. It's completely free and there are loads more excellent Logic Pro for iPad videos on the way.